Good evening again, folks. Um, I wanted to start going through the evidence that is available from Brendan Dassey's case because I don't want him to get lost in the shuffle again. Because, yeah, no, that, that irritates me. Uh, on many le levels, uh, basically on every level, Zellner's got Stephen covered. And I'm not saying anything disparaging about Brendan's counsel, but I think that his story is getting lost in the shuffle here. So I started going through the criminal complaint that uh, Wiegert and Fossbender used uh, to charge Brendan Dassey. And oof, like everything else in this case, yeah. So, uh, you know, as you know, Brendan Dassey was charged with first degree intentional homicide as a party to a crime, mutilating a corpse as a party to a crime, and first degree sexual assault as a party to a crime. Now, you know, you go through the first several pages of this bullshit, and it's all about how Stephen Avery, blah, 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 blah. Then you get down to February 27th of 2006, and this is where they, uh, you know, get into how they spoke to Brendan Dassey, and then how on March 1st, they spoke to him again at the school, and that at that point, uh, Brendan Dassey confessed to the murder. Now, he says that on October 31st, he went to pick up the mail on his bike, and upon returning, he saw that there was a letter for Stephen. He then stated that as he was going to Stephen's house to uh, deliver the mail, he passed a burn barrel located on Avery's property. But that burn barrel wasn't located on Stephen's property. It was located on Barb Janda's property. Stephen, or I'm sorry, not Stephen, Brendan's mother. He stated that he looked into the burn barrel and observed a cell phone and camera inside of the barrel. Just a cell phone and camera? What about her PDA? What about her purse? What about the jeans that wound up with that rivet in there? Not only that, but why would Stephen dump the camera and the cell phone in a burn barrel on Barb Janda's property in the midst of kidnapping and restraining Teresa Halbach? That doesn't make any sense, folks. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's bullshit. <laughs> I love this thing. Thank you, Jackie. Now, he says that as he approached... Stephen's trailer, he heard screams for help. And he didn't run to his house and tell people, hey, we need to call for help. He then states that he approached the door to Stephen's residence and he continued to hear screams coming from the trailer and he described them as female voice screaming, help me. Still decided to knock on the door and wait several minutes for Stephen Avery to answer the door, covered in sweat, according to Kratz. You like how I said that? Yeah, that was for you, Kratz. Why, you little fucking piglet. Um, he then stated that Stephen Avery told Dassey that he had fucked Teresa Halbach and wanted to keep doing it and stated that he wanted to fuck her so hard. Uh, he then says that Stephen escorted him into his bedroom where he observed Teresa Halbach nude and restrained in the bed with handcuffs and leg irons. But folks, we've already established that Teresa Halbach's DNA was not found anywhere on those leg irons or the handcuffs. So the mere fact that there was no DNA of hers found anywhere on the bed, the handcuffs, or anywhere in the house completely disproves this narrative. And yet... That's exactly what he was arrested on. If you don't have the evidence to support it, you cannot arrest. Duh. <coughs> he says that he sexually assaults Teresa Halbach, and then he puts his clothes on, and he and Stephen go out to the living room and watch TV. And they were in the living room approximately 10 to 15 minutes, as, da as uh, Stephen Avery told Dassey that you know, 
he's asking him if it felt good and that he was proud of him. Wait a second, I thought that Steven just said that he had fucked Teresa and he wanted to keep fucking her. Why then would he not continue to rape her repeatedly? He's got a woman restrained and tied up to his bed. He has stated to his nephew, allegedly, that he wants to keep raping her and yet he doesn't keep raping her. He just decides to go, do not pass go, do not collect $200. And go straight to killing her. Does that make sense to any of you motherfuckers? Because it don't make no goddamn sense to me. If Stephen Avery said that he wanted to keep fucking her, why didn't he keep fucking her? Um, he then said that uh, Stephen Avery told him that he was going to kill Halbach. And then specifically told him he was going to tie her up, stab her, and choke her. The fuck were they doing? Making a to-do list? Like, hmm. stab her, check. Tie her up, check. Choke her, check, check. The fuck? Dassey stated that Stephen Avery also talked about getting rid of her body and that he wanted to burn her. Now keep that in mind. That's going to become important in a second. They apparently then retrieve a knife and go back into Stephen's bedroom where Dassey states that Stephen told Halbach that he was going to kill her and that he was not going to let her go while threatening her with the knife. What is the point of that? I have never, ever heard of anything like that in a case where the defendant was actually guilty, where he actually did commit the crime. They don't tell the fucking victim, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to kill you, and then stab her. You know, it's either I'm going to kill you, you're not going to fucking get out of here, and then they leave to fuck with them and then come back and just stab him without saying anything, or they just stab him, period, end of fucking story. I've never heard of a single instance where the killer has threatened the victim repeatedly right before stabbing her. It doesn't make any sense. He then says that Avery used the knife and stabbed Teresa in the stomach. Again, where's the fucking blood? You stab somebody in the stomach, blood everywhere. Dassey then said that Stephen Avery handed him the knife and told Dassey to cut her throat. Dassey stated that he then went over to Teresa Halbach and cut her throat with the knife. Where's the blood? Where's the arterial spray? Where's the blood? Where's the sling off? Dassey stated that Avery then told Dassey to cut off some of Teresa Halbach's hair. Where is it then? There was no hair found in the trailer. Dassey stated that he did, and then Dassey stated that Teresa Halbach was still alive at that time. I call bullshit. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Stephen Avery then went over to Teresa and put his hands around Halbach's neck and strangled her for approximately two to three minutes. Why? Her throat was already open. Strangling her would not do a fucking thing. Just get you fucking messy. He then stated that Stephen Avery went to the bathroom and washed the blood off of his hands. Where's the blood? If he used his bathroom to wash off the blood, why was no blood of Teresa Hallbox found anywhere in that house? Anywhere. <coughs> Dassey stated that during this period of time, Stephen also punched Teresa Hallbach and told her to shut her mouth. I don't remember seeing any wounds on Stephen Avery's hands that suggested having punched anyone. When you punch someone, your knuckles will get bruised and discolored. Anybody remember any discoloring to Stephen Avery's hands? This gets me, though. Dassey states that he and Stephen Avery then unshackled Teresa Halbach and tied her up with rope before taking her out to the garage, shooting her, and then throwing her in the burn pit. At no time during this statement does he state that they take the rope off of her. So where's the rope? Why, is, why wasn't the rope, why, why wasn't singed pieces of rope found in the burn pit? And for that matter, if they shot her 10 or 11 times, I'm pretty sure I brought this up before, where are the bullets? Why weren't bullets found along with her remains? Well, you know, depending on the makeup of the bullets, because if they were lead, they would have melted. 
but if they were copper, they wouldn't have melted. Either way, though, there would have been metal residue on the remains. So where are the bullets? Hmm? Folks, the fact of the matter is, is that this is all complete bullshit, and Brenda Dassey was railroaded every bit as much, if not more so, than Stephen Avery was. And yet, nobody sees a problem with this? All right, folks, I have got a new case that my partner and I want to introduce you to tonight, so I'm going to get some of that stuff together and I will make another video. I will include the link for this down in the description below along with the link to the GoFundMe campaign for Clue TV. Thank you all very much for watching. We'll see you soon.